Welcome back. I hope that you enjoyed that. Lab 150 underscore 1 uses enumerate. It's a very good example of when you need enumerate. We have our list of colors. I'm going to sort them because that's the spec and enumerate them. So I'm going to get the index and color for each of the colors. I will always print the color, but I will not go to the new line unless this is true. Then I go to the new line. What is this? Well, the first time around we have a zero. Zero modulo four is zero, not three. One, not three, two, three. So the fourth time, index is three, and the modulo is three, and we go to the new line. And that's how we got four across. The next time we go to the new line is when the I is the seven. Okay, that's that one. One fifty underscore two is a bit of a deal. I enjoy this code because the code is as easy to read for me as a specification and it follows it exactly. We have that Y is not counted as if it is the first character. So that'll be the first piece of code that matches the spec. We see we have always vowels and I have them lowercase. And these are the spurious these are the spurious characters. The punctuation, which is in the string library, is one string of all the punctuation. And also the digits and the underscore. We don't care about those. We don't want them to be on the ends of words. So they are spurious if they're on the ends of words. Count is going to keep our vowel count. We are for looping through the lowercase version of our phrase that has been split into the words. So those are the words. I am stripping off those spurious characters. And this is the word now that I am going to evaluate to see how many vowels are in it. And because I need to know the length of the word several times below, I will take the length of the word. Now, if the character is in always vowels, then it definitely is a vowel, and we go on, the continue gets the next character. If the one that's not in always vowels that we got to here is not Y, or the index is zero, it's Y at the beginning, that's this, it's not counted. So then we just go on and we do not count it. Now we know that not only do we have a Y, but we are not at the beginning of the word. So index minus one exists. And we see up here, if it is preceded by a vowel, we don't count it. So if the character at index minus one is in always vowels, we don't count it. And we go and get the next character. Then we see that it is counted if it's in a ying, and that ying is at the end of the word. So let's see. If the word ends with a ying, then maybe so, but only if that y is at the index, a length of the word minus four. Then we're looking at the y that's at the end with the ying. And yes, we count it, and we go get the next character. We already know it's preceded by a consonant from what happened before. It is counted if it's at the end of the word and it is preceded by a consonant. So we already know that it is preceded by a consonant, but is it at the end of the word? Well, this will tell us. And then the last one is it is counted if it is preceded and followed by a consonant. We know at this point, because if this was true, we would never have gotten here. But if it's false, this gets evaluated. So we know that we're not at the end of the word. We can look at what follows it. And if it's a consonant, then we count it. Whew, that's it.
that's the other big use of enumerate when you need to look ahead and behind in the data. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next lab.